Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be looking at Rocky Memphis and the Temple of Ofuxoff. Yes, that is actually the title. So this is a Metroidvania kind of style game where you have to explore 600 freaking screens in search of 4,000 treasures. Uh, that sort of made me think it's like Spelunky on crack or something, like gigantic, gigantic amount of stuff to look for. Um, not a ton in the way of options to check out in the opening screen here, you know, a couple sound things to look at. Uh, we can set up the keys and the screen mode windowed or full screen, not a big deal. Uh, I guess there's an online sort of a leaderboard to pay attention to, and we've got our credits of course scrolling by on the bottom. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, in the Commodore 64 style as far as I know here, and uh, let's get into it. So maybe a little bit of that La Mulana flare as well, which seems to be coming up more and more. This is a strange looking snake. Not too happy about this snake, actually. Alright, so... I actually figured the graphics would be pretty crappy. They're actually looking decent. Uh, so there's one of the 4,000 treasures collected. They look like little shining pills or something. What? Oh, that's not very fair. Uh, so the goal is to do this as quickly as possible and uh, save along the way whenever we like by pressing S. Okay, well it diminishes it a little bit if there's going to be uh, many treasures in one place. I was kind of figuring like each treasure was going to have its own area or something, but that would kind of be illogical. There's also a map, of course, which would be a really good idea in a game like this. We've got some excellent chiptune music playing. Definitely puts you in the mood to do some exploring. And of course it figures, since I'm me, I instantly need to go left. Oh, okay, that gave me super speed or something. But yeah, 600 screens is still a lot of screens. That's like, nothing to sneeze at. Um, is the super speed permanent? Or did something just change? It's... I was wondering when I first started it if when I started re Ooh. when I started recording it almost seemed like I slowed down a little bit. So I was wondering if it was messing with the frame rate, but hard to say. So the one thing you would probably expect is uh, there's a pretty good tendency that some of this stuff will start to look a little repetitious, uh, and I really wouldn't blame them. I mean, this is uh, a pretty ambitious amount of stuff to have to plan out. Let's check that map out. Oh, man. Alright, that is obscene. 1%? Wow. Alright, this takes Castlevania uh, to the next level. I could easily see playing this probably for a few hours, and there's some sort of a door here locked. I wonder if it marks that on the map as well, because that would be kind of nice. Yeah, it does. And remember to keep saving, now that I've got a wonderful 1% of the game complete. And uh, if you remember, uh, in uh, You Have to Win the Game, there was uh, subtitles on the bottom of the screen, and it's sort of reminding me of that right here. Can I make this jump over that fire? No, I definitely cannot. Man, I can't imagine getting so good at this that it's like not even a big deal to finish the game, and then the, what you want is just to beat it in record time. That seems kind of crazy to me. Alright, seems like my super speed has worn off. I was actually starting to rely on that. It's making it a lot easier for me to, to navigate some of these traps. Get a little bit more momentum. Alright, skeleton man. This guy's jump is like just enough to clear anything. He, he doesn't give you a lot of extra room to go by. I like the skeletons dancing at the top, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the guy we're playing as is like a pretty sweet prospector looking type of guy. I feel like I've seen him somewhere before, maybe on a website or something that I enjoy visiting. The Flames of Retro-X. Retrox. Either way. Yeah, I totally see why the title is really applicable. I think that actually is a great title for that. Uh, every time you look at that map screen, you're going to be like, yup. That title works. 
probably won't write the whole thing in the YouTube uh, title, though, because that's a little bit on the long side. But, you know, we've done it before with things like uh, activate the three article articles, the artifacts, and then leave. Oh. The Breathing Tunnel of Graffiti. Wow, I can really fly up those ropes. That must be handy in gym class. Uh, what is this? Conveyor belt? Okay. Uh, oh, I can't do anything when I'm walking. Okay. All I can do when I'm touching that thing is just go with it. Or jump. But I can't walk. No big deal. Man, if this game didn't have a map, I don't think anyone would ever beat it. I don't know how you're supposed to remember where you have and haven't been aside from that. And especially, like, it's not gonna mark... Oh no, it is actually gonna mark the ones you left treasure in, that's good. Alright, the developer gets huge props for being uh, thoughtful like that, because if they want to just be a huge jerk, all they would have had to do is not put any kind of indication when there's still stuff left on the screen, and you would be, like, quadruple screwed. You know, I said it's a Metroidvania-style game, and one of the things that usually goes along... That's gonna kill me. One of the things that usually goes along with Metroidvania-style games, aside from the exploration element, is also that you usually get some sort of extra abilities or something like that. And, uh, I don't know that you do get that in this. Maybe you do. I mean, that I did speed up for some reason, but I still haven't quite isolated why that happened. But even if you don't get that kind of a thing, I would be okay with the approach, because this is actually very... Um, sort of a minimalistic version of that type of game, and I could see this easily of being easily having been like an original Nintendo game, or you know, it's designed like a Commodore 64 game, I guess. I unfortunately didn't really uh, play any Commodore 64 when I was a kid. Maybe it was slightly before my time, but you know, I was born in '85, so I was pretty much right on board for the original Nintendo, and I caught the tail end of the Atari uh, 2600. Some some good and bad there. I definitely remember, you know, playing combat for hours and hours and, like, marveling over, you know, Space Invaders and Centipede and all the usual uh, typical retro arcade stuff that everyone always talks about. Alright, there's hardly anything. I've room fristed 5% of the rooms now. How have I never heard of this, by the way? Like, that's another thing. There's so many games that have existed for a while, and I don't know when this came out, but I am certain that this isn't new. Um, there's so many games that I've just never seen still. And you have to understand, I've spent hours looking through as many possible games as I can find. Like, every indie database that I can come up with, I will sit and page through every single thing until it's done. And uh, I will always walk away with like 10 or 15, maybe more, uh, cool leads on ideas to check out for the show. And I've been doing this for, a, you know, a bunch of months now, and there's still so many more games I haven't even gotten to see yet. Uh oh Oh, crap. So, I'm pretty psyched that there's still so much great material out there. And there's so much originality and fun. I mean, I can't say that this is entirely an original idea or anything, but it is really well done. And it's meaty, like, this is a serious meaty game, like, there's a bunch of stuff to do in this. You could stay occupied with this, I'm sure, for a while. And it doesn't come off at all amateurish, like, this totally feels legit. And hopefully you get what I mean when I'm saying that, I mean, this doesn't look like it was, you know, cobbled together, uh, rushed, or, you know, just not cared for when it was created. I mean, the guy's walking animation is a little goofy, but whatever. Uh oh. Crap! Okay, that was pretty lucky that I got through that. I don't think I'm gonna make it back through, though. But uh, lucky for me, it actually puts me out at the exit. I'm gonna save again. What am I at now? 7%! Alright, so I actually almost need to start looking at my options for places to go. That uh, background is, is more than just a little bit distracting, but that's cool. It's pretty trippy at the same time. 
so we can just keep moving left, I guess. Watch out for the skelly over here. The mine carts. Oh, they kill me. I thought I could at least stand on the tops of them. Alright, well. Typical mine carts. Always trying to cause havoc. It doesn't seem to keep track of how many times you've died, which may be uh, good or bad, I'm not sure. Because I guess if you do really well at this and you hardly ever get hit, I mean, you, you might want to brag, but you don't really have that option. But if you suck at it, then you don't have to feel so bad because it's not going to tell you. Or maybe it'll tell you when you finish the game or get everything or what have you. That's lava. It's kind of weird looking lava. Looks sort of like a... Uh, Carbonated jello or something. Carbonated jello is a good idea, by the way. Oh, poor jump there. Um, okay, I want to keep going up. Man, if I ever needed to climb up a mountain, this dude would be the guy to go to. Because he knows how to go quickly up ropes. Like, nobody's business. Like, he's got that under control. They should have brought him with those, uh, those girls on the descent. Man, that was a crazy movie. I haven't watched that in years, though. Everybody's covered in blood and there's, like, freaking golems. I don't even know what the hell happened. It's been too long. <laughs> crazy movie, though. Okay, dying on pits or spike traps multiple times here. So yeah, I'm definitely getting, like, the Spelunky La Mulana vibe from this, and in a really good way, actually. I mean, both Spelunky and La Mulana can be at times extremely difficult. This one seems... not that difficult, really. It just seems sort of like one of those things where you just put your time in and enjoy it. And you probably won't have a ton of trouble beating it. Why is there a car there? I hope that's a Blaster Master reference. Um... I can definitely not cross this gap. Time Traveler's Prize. Okay, yeah, right, I should have actually paid attention to the text there. I've seen Back to the Future, I get it. Har 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 har. So I could probably jump over that barrel, I'm gonna take the easy way out though. I hope that's a rope, yep. Oh man, diamond mines, those are my favorite kind. Let's go this way though. Totally into this music. Oh, cave in, can't get through that. Alright, so I gotta come back from the other direction, I suppose. Man, 600 rooms. Must have taken quite a while to set up. And there's actually a pretty good amount of diversity in the art, too. And not only diversity, but it's really consistently uh, of the same ilk. Like, the art style is really consistent, too. It all feels uh, part of one world which can be a little tough to do when you have to space out so much stuff. I mean, look like the little textures on the bricks and the background of this crystal cavern area. It's got that nice stippled design going for the uh, shading. Not sure what's up over here. There's like some plaid stuff. Whoa. The way to the after... Okay, so we do have some kind of power-ups to worry about because there's no way I'd be able to get through that. That's not going to work. Alright, which way do I want to go, though? Up? Probably up. Let's just go up for as far as we can. King Smyotep store. Okay. Whoa, Beast of Five Fingers. Those remind me a lot of the dudes from Zelda that drop down from the ceiling and take you to the beginning of the dungeon. Those are pretty much my arch nemeses. I've never been friends with them, and I never will be friends with them. What is this? Oh, wow. Okay, so we've got Symphony in the Night style coffin uh, teleporters, which is okay by me. Let's do another save a Rooney here. Okay. And out we go into the speedy gone Scorpius. Okay, so I'm in a whole different realm now. I mean, you can see every time I check the map, it's like I'm barely anywhere. And there's still 3,779 more treasures to find. Alright, is this gonna kill me? Nope. Took mercy on me. These, uh, these barrels have mines of their own nowadays. Oh, those kill me. I 
thought I could pick the- Okay, so only things that glow you can bother with. What is that? The way that animates is really creepy. Whoa, okay, so we were underwater? What's down- Okay, that's all supposed to be water. I never would have realized. Whoa, cool cave. Mixed gems. See some amethyst and maybe some quartz. That thing on the ceiling doesn't look very threatening considering it's very, very far away. Have I ever told you guys that uh, Symphony of the Night is one of my favorite games ever? I mean, you probably know already, Super Metroid is pretty much my very favorite game ever, but Symphony of the Night and uh, Dawn of Sorrow, uh, all the DS entries and the uh, GBA entry, uh, Aria of Sorrow, are right up there as well. Because I do love I mean, some exploration and platforming as well as, you know, fighting crazy monsters and all that mythological stuff that happens. I don't know what's going on with my character, I was just floating. Oh, I can just walk on nothing now. This seems like a pretty useful talent. Uh, I wonder how I could really use this to my best effect. Um, probably not getting hit, that seems like a good plan. Whoa. I'm just blazing through these rooms now. This is God's puzzle. A puzzle unto itself. Am I supposed to be completely completely invincible and able to fly? Because that seems like a little bit like cheating. I hope I didn't glitch the game by accident. If I did, I totally didn't mean to. Um, something at the bottom of the screen is filling in from the left and the right because I keep picking up these little weighted anchor thingies. So I'm guessing that's some sort of a key or something's going to activate there. Yeah, I don't know, I think I glitched the game, because I don't feel like this is supposed to happen. And if it is, it's not the best idea as far as game design. Um, I guess I'll roll with it, because it's going to allow me to show you more of the game quickly. But it doesn't feel right. Wow. Let's just keep going. Full pants time. Yeah, see, I'm supposed to be falling, and I'm not falling, I'm climbing. Every single screen has, like, a different theme, though. And I can't even get hurt. Oh, and now I'm super fast on top of it. Can I, like, go up in this... Okay, it looks like you can go through a tube or something. Alright, well, this is certainly breaking the game. Uh, no doubt. So yeah, if this happens to you, uh, take the high road and reload your save, which is uh, apparently not what I'm doing, because I guess I'm just kind of a jerk like that. But it is kind of fun to uh, mess with the game a little bit and just very quickly zoom around. Wow, okay. Well, the, the goal of my in mind uh, of doing this was to see how much of the map I could open up really quickly, since obviously we don't play these episodes for that that long. So I wanted to use that to my advantage and... Uh, grab a bunch of stuff. The brown hex rooms. Even just coming up with names for 600 rooms would probably get a little bit tedious after a while. And there's a lot of little monster guys, too. Like, the amount of those that the guy came up with is pretty incredible, too. He can't seem to go up that way. I mean, I guess when you're making this type of a thing, you could use one enemy type as a template and sort of build off of it. Like, if you have one that travels on the floor back and forth... Uh, oh! Something just finally was able to kill me. Apparently spikes are still problematic. Everything else, though, is all good. Right, so you could use one enemy type as a template and sort of build on that. But still, I mean, there's, there's a good variety of art and animation and stuff. See that little silver thing? It keeps filling in on the sides of the bottom there. 
All right, that would be a end point. All right, so I'm all the way up here. I still haven't even connected with the original area. Rooms visited 19%. I, I hope you're getting the picture by now that this is a pretty serious endeavor. You guys are going to be in for a, uh, a good ride here, like a good probably four or five hours of exploring this massive, massive area. This is like the exact type of thing I love, too. If they, if they had just focused maybe on a, a slightly different element, like if this was more like a, a Metroid-style thing where you, you really are after all these different abilities, and the rooms are a little bit more time-consuming to get through, I probably would have said this is like one of my top favorite games ever. Uh, I mean, I'm just guessing, but... I totally I like the art style, it's very cool. And there's, again, I mentioned a lot of art. I mean, this is like a whole little set-piece thing, and then there's all these different tiles going on, as well as a ton of different types of, like, vines and animating fire and all kinds of enemies and background tiles and... Landscapes, this is a serious thing. It's nice not having to jump anymore. And it's nice having to, to not worry about going so slowly either, because that was getting a little annoying. But uh, this isn't exactly how this is supposed to work. Whoa, now I'm attracting stuff to me. Apparently I have uh, gone Super Saiyan. Or maybe I picked up the electric uh, TV from... Sonic the Hedgehog. What are those? The Acid Brothers. I think the Acid Brothers might have made this game. So what did I get? There must be all these like special little artifacts that give you special powers, and I'm just not really noticing the differences between them as I pick them up. Wow, that's that's a ton of them. Alright, so I've almost gotten a thousand treasures in the short time I've been watching, or you've been watching this. I haven't even been looking at the map for a while. I guess because it's partially not even necessary. Alright, it looks like I, I might be able to reconnect with the other side of the map if I keep going down. It's nice to be able to pull them in through the other parts of the map. Holy crap. Alright, if I just get, like, one more power, I'm just gonna be omnipotent and it's just gonna finish the map off for me. I'm pretty much omnipotent as it is. Almost back. When I get back to the other end, I think we'll wrap this up. Is this a dead end? That is rude. What's over here? Oh, this might get us down. Oh, wow! The glitch just wore off. That's so random. What the hell just made it stop right then? Well, I should be able to connect back to the original area in just a moment once I make a little bit more progress over. Um... Oh, okay, so I would have to go left, left, up, right, 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 down, and then who knows how it's gonna connect. Well, I think you get the idea. So this is Rocky Memphis, and I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly recommend this one. It's free, you got no reason to skip it. I mean, the only reason I could imagine you wouldn't want to play this if you just aren't a fan of exploration-style games, or you find that, you know, completing large maps like this just gets on your nerves for some reason. Uh, but, you know, for me, exact opposite. Totally love it. I'm a completionist. This stuff is, you know, some of my favorite type of gameplay for indie games. And the, uh, the style in general, super charming, really well done. Uh, tight controls slick graphics. I mean, they're not, you know, ultra fancy or anything, but they totally work. And I really have no complaints. This game seems very well done. So, of course, head on down to the link that I put in the description and give this one a download. And don't forget to head on over to my website, which is www.indieimpressions.com, and that's with a hyphen in the middle. Of course, I put that link right in the description as well, so you can feel free to pop on over through that. Uh, through that website, you'll also find our forums, where you can meet lots of cool people who also love a lot of the same stuff that we do. And you can also find my social media links, like Facebook, Twitter, and anything else that happens to pop up in the future. 
And um, that will pretty much do it for Rocky Memphis. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I hope you have a lovely night. And I hope you come back again tomorrow. Because I do these videos every single day without exception. Alright, have a lovely night, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Later.